Sydney residents are being advised to stay indoors with hazardous air pollution levels across the city today. Asthma Australia says this is particularly relevant for young children, pregnant women and the elderly and those with respiratory illnesses. Its chief executive Michelle Goldman joins me now. Thank you so much for coming in to speak to us. How bad was it in particular for asthmatics today? It would have been terrible today. So we've seen pretty bad levels of air quality over the last couple of weeks. Certainly the longest duration and highest intensity of smoke until today. Um, I think being outdoors today would have impacted anybody, let alone people with asthma and other respiratory illnesses. So what would people have experienced today? Well, certainly everything from the milder end of scale sore eyes, sore throats, a little bit of nausea and headaches. I know that in the last couple of weeks we've seen about a thousand um, hospitalizations due to asthma and over 2,500 calls to ambulance services and that was before the hazardous levels we experienced today. So um, a lot of people would have been experiencing um, acute symptoms and exacerbations that it would have taken them to hospital. So you, you expect that those numbers would have risen today? Yeah, absolutely. And um, what's the cumulative effect of this hazardous smoke over the last few weeks? I think that's an excellent question because we know the evidence shows short-term exposure is harmful in terms of acute symptoms, but it's really the cumulative effect that has the longer-term impact on health. Um, so we would be urging everybody to avoid the amount of time that they're spending outdoors and in smoky conditions, um, stay indoors, avoid um, any outdoor activity, sports when levels are as hazardous as the ones that we're seeing today. So we saw that the uh, Sheffield Shield match went ahead at the SCG today. Do you think that was the, the wrong decision? Well, we sort of we would have urged anyone in levels that are 11 times um, levels that are considered to be hazardous, uh, way worse than Beijing. Um, just walking outdoors is, is, you know, causes symptoms. So we certainly would be urging everybody to cancel any outdoor activities. We're seeing a live shot of Sydney Harbour now. That smoke has cleared up quite a bit from what we saw earlier today when it was just so thick that you couldn't see the bridge, you couldn't see across the harbour, you couldn't see across the city. You mentioned the short-term impacts. There's also been some studies done about long-term impacts of smoke exposure, but it's the medium-term impacts that really not a lot of studies have been done into. Yeah, I, I think um, there has been some research done looking at hazardous air quality levels to do with um, the Hazelwood fires, for example, um, with other bushfires. We've recently supported a PhD student who's looked at the impact of bushfires on health, which is often not considered as highly in the equation when considering hazard reduction burns. So we do know that the immediate symptoms of breathlessness and wheezing um, are there. We know the medium term impacts are that um, it could worsen your asthma um, or keep you away from work and at, at some points take you to hospital. Um, and the longer term impacts are concerns about, you know, uh, long term impacts on the development of the lungs and therefore um, relegating you to ongoing symptoms. Have asthmatics taken all the warnings on board and so they're travelling with all of their medication at all times? Um, I haven't spoken to all of them. There's 2.7 million Australians with asthma. We know that many of them who are contacting us are very concerned about things. I think some of the concerns that they've articulated is not knowing um, how bad things are and especially for young children where it's very difficult to articulate when they're not feeling well. So we would certainly encourage anyone with asthma or with children with asthma to be highly vigilant at this time. Um, if you're experiencing any symptoms, make sure you've got your reliever close on hand and if you're breathless or wheezy, if you're unable to speak in full sentences, then that's quite significant and you should call triple um, zero. What works in terms of protection? That's a really good question too. And I know people are seeking advice what they should be doing. Um, it's pretty general advice to stay indoors. Um, but certainly people who are experiencing symptoms and are a bit at their wits end as to what they can do, we would encourage them to create a clean air shelter in their home. So choose a room that doesn't have a lot of windows or gaps in doors. Um, put a towel maybe at the bottom of the doorway. Some people are considering air purifiers, so that could be a good 
option. I would certainly encourage everyone to make sure that it filters fine particles and has a HEPA filter if they are going to purchase um, one. The P2 grade masks are an option that some people have been using. It's really critical if people are going to use face masks to ensure that there is a tight seal around the face. It wouldn't be effective, for example, for males who have beards. Um, so those are some options. Even just spending some time in a shopping centre or in a cinema to have some reprieve from the smoke could be helpful. Are you worried that this will or could last all summer? We are very concerned about that and it's certainly much earlier in the season than we've ever experienced smoke at this level. So um, people should be vigilant in taking their preventer medications. So uh, ongoing smoke um, and future fires, um, they're getting as much protection from their medication as they can. You said you're very concerned about this potentially lasting all summer. So are you satisfied with the response from state and national leaders? We're a consumer organisation and people are asking us for real-time air quality monitoring. At the moment, small particulate matter is a 24-hour average, so that's something we'd really like to discuss and pursue with government. We know it's done in Tasmania, for example, so it's feasible, um, and I think that is something that would really empower and help the community to be able to prepare in advance when conditions are deteriorating. OK, Michelle Goldman, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me.